let's look at how price controls or price regulation impacts a monopolist. Yeah. So a monopolist would have the marginal revenue curve, the average total revenue curve, and demand curve, which is different. Yeah. And we will have the marginal cost curve. So far, everything is the same. Without the price control and regulation, the monopolist would look at what is the price uh, that I should be charging for quantity where MR equals MC, yeah? So MR equals MC, you look at this point first and determine the quantity, you get quantity that a monopolist should be uh, producing and then you look at the demand curve intersection and find out what is the price at which for this point the monopolist should set the price. So you get the price uh, and you get the quantity that a monopolist should charge. And we have the producer surplus, which is this area here. And we have the consumer surplus, which is this area here. Yeah. So ima imagine that there was now a price control or a price regulation that the government comes in and sets and says, hey, look, you have this uh, price PM that you're charging, but I'm going to set a monopoly ceiling, price ceiling for you, at which point you cannot charge anything above this price. So it is a much lower price per unit at which you have to sell, and you have to sell it um, at the ceiling or below it. Yeah. So let's say the government comes in and puts in this price ceiling. What happens then is your marginal revenue is now going to be fixed. So initially the marginal revenue curve was this line here. Yeah. But the government saying, hey, no, no, I'm going to give you the same price. Let's say this was $10, and the government says you can only sell it at $7. So initially, you were willing to sell uh, at a much lower quantity uh, and get much higher prices. But the government saying, no, I'm going to give you $7 fixed. I'm going to give you $7 fixed. Whatever. So what happens is your MR curve now is fixed until when, until when it hits the demand curve. Yeah. So you have a fixed seven dollars that you you can expect to make um, for all of these quantities, yeah, uh, until it hits the demand curve. When it hits the demand curve, then the MR curve will then intersect the original MR curve, and at this point it's okay because you're you're going to be charging much lower prices, yeah. So it will follow the original MR curve, yeah. So what what we see is that now quantity with price control had an increase, yeah, because you're going to produce these many quantities and you will produce it at this price, yeah. Any quantities above, you can, you know, you're, you're willing to sell at a lower price, yeah. So what happened is this, this MR curve is no longer true and now it's, all of this is gone. So now this is your MR curve, yeah. And I'm going to erase the, MR, the old MR curve because you're making the fixed amount of money. Marginal revenue is fixed. And so now what happened is uh, we start to see that the consumer surplus, which was originally just this area here, yeah, that was our original consumer surplus. Now with this price control, uh, with price seeding being added, now the producer surplus got transferred from to the consumer surplus. So originally this area was red. Right? So before, when this was the price, we had all of this as, you know, we had all of this as uh, our producer surplus. But now, this is no longer producer surplus, it's completely consumer surplus. So this is completely now blue. Yeah? And we also saw some of this dead weight that was originally dead weight, all of this was dead weight, is now reclaimed by consumer surplus. So what we see is that adding a price ceiling actually improved, uh, in this case, based on this curve, consumer surplus, yeah? And then it, it reduced producer surplus, yeah? And we also see increase in quantity, yeah? So we see increase in quantity and uh, that is how price regulation or price control can help, yeah? So this is super important for us to understand as to how our marginal revenue curve now became a flat line until it hits the demand, at which point it just then follows the original marginal revenue curve. So in a sense, what's happening is 
um, for certain quantity, which was uh, which the government, let's say, puts in the ceiling, it basically is going to assure you of this fixed price. Say, hey, you will get this much money for this units fixed, but you only get this much. You cannot charge higher. Yeah. So, depending on the trade-off, you could start to see that the government can regulate all the way up. So this is still the dead weight, right? This area is still dead weight, meaning it's still not optimal. So imagine if the government could identify this to be the price ceiling, then the quantity would go up further, prices would continue to go down, and producer surplus gets, again, moved back to the consumer surplus. So this is a pretty important area as regulators to realize like what is the dead weight loss to the economy, how much is the consumer surplus being eroded, how much is the benefit that the monopolist is enjoying, how much are they enjoying too much that could be transferred to the consumers. These are all decisions that the government has to take, but it's super important to understand the high level, what happens to price and quantity when there is a price ceiling introduced. Yeah?